Hey guys, we're coming in on a year of the release of the new digital SAT, and I have some insider scoop information for you. So here's the thing. With the new digital SAT, we're approximately one year into the exam. So that means that the SAT companies out there have collected data on what works and what doesn't work for the exam. Please note the disclaimer above, and let's talk about it. So for the November 2024 SAT, there are going to be some things that are different than the November 2023 SAT, let's say. See, the thing is, for the digital company, they have collected all this information about what works, what doesn't work, how people are using Desmos. Because remember, this is the first time that we're seeing Desmos being utilized for both math portions of the new digital SAT. So what does that mean for you? So for the October SAT, there have been reports that have indicated that there are problems like algebra problems that use less Desmos. You're not really prone to using Desmos to solve for that quadratic formula because they're not giving as frequent of those types of problems. And I think my theory is that they've collected all this data for at least one year on how students utilize Desmos when solving problems and they realize that students are not really using the test for what it's meant to be, which is not a test to see how quickly you can create a shortcut and answer Desmos related problems, especially for algebra. Instead, it's a test about critical thinking. So you're going to notice that college admissions are going to be looking at the new November 2024 SAT a little bit differently. So now that we have these misconceptions out of the way, let's tackle a problem that you could potentially see for the new SAT. Please note that this problem is not going to be exactly the same, but we can sort of guess what types of problems are going to be there based on what we've collected or gathered from previous exams, especially recent previous exams. So if you're preparing for the new November 2024 SAT, take a look at this problem, try to solve it yourself, and then come back around. Make sure to pause this video and then unpause once completed. Okay, now that you've tackled looking at the problem and trying to assess what the possible solution should be, Think to yourself, when did you use Desmos? Now, you could have used Desmos to plug in a number to solve for calculations, but you really didn't use it for a quadratic or a shortcut. And that's what we're trying to hone in here. Algebra-based problems like this one, which are mostly percentages, are going to be utilizing Desmos more for calculations, not for utilizing it to graph. I hope that makes sense. Now, let's tackle this problem together. A lion has a total body mass of 150 kg. If 72% of that mass is muscle and 60% is remaining or of the remaining mass is skeletal, what is the approximate fat mass of the lion? And you might be thinking, what are they trying to tell you? So first, let's try to calculate the information that we do have. We can calculate the muscle mass. We know that there is a total body of 150 kg. I'm going to have my line here, and I'm going to draw this wonderful lion. And just so you know, that lion is 150 kg. That's its total mass. And we know that 72% of this mass is muscle. So I can calculate the muscle. So I go ahead and times this by 72%. Now, remember, if I convert this to decimal, this is 0.72. And go ahead and you'll notice that if you calculate this, obviously using some sort of calculator, whether Desmos or your own calculator, you go ahead and get 108 kg. That is the amount of muscle that this line has. It's been eating a lot of protein there. So now the remaining is skeletal and we need to find the fat mass of the lion. So when I look at this problem, they're asking you to calculate the fat mass and we're not really given any piece of information, but I want you to think about this in terms of 100% composition. We know that some of this is muscle we know that some of this is skeletal, and we know that the remaining is going to be fat. 
okay? And that's what we have to try to calculate. So we now know this muscle part right here. We have that calculation. We went ahead and said that that is 108 kg. So we have that covered. So I'm going to go ahead and change my color here and say, okay, we have that colored. Now we have to determine the remaining mass. What is left over that compensates for both the skeletal and the fat? So to do that, I go ahead and take the total we know for all three, which is 150, and I subtract that 108 to get the leftover. So we know that the skeletal plus the fat is going to be 108 subtracted from 150. So 150 minus 108. And of course, you can calculate this on your calculator or using Desmos, and you can go ahead and see that's 42 kg. So our leftover here for these two, for the fat and the skeletal, is now going to be 42 kg. So we can calculate the percentage of the skeletal of this leftover because we know that the remaining of the skeletal is 60%. So be careful, it says remaining mass. So we are talking about the remaining mass, which is the skeletal plus the fat. So 42 of 60% of, I should say, or 0 0.60 of 42, we go ahead and type that into our calculator and we get 25 Point two kg. So that is the skeletal mass. So we now have the skeletal, we now have the muscle, and now we want to find that fat mass. Now the way that we can calculate it is we know that this total here is 150. And now we've discovered that this is 25.2. So we can take the total minus the skeletal to get the remaining fat. So we can go ahead and say that 150 minus 25.2, plug that into your calculator, da -da 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 -da, and then go ahead and get 16.8, which is approximately A. So the best answer for this is A. So I just wanna note a couple of things here. One, you'll see the term remaining mass. It's a critical thinking problem. It's not just you have some total percentage and then you have to complain, complain or think about, I shouldn't say complain, you should be thinking about the remaining mass as being the leftover of the total body mass, but just for the skeletal, because we also have the fat. This is a critical thinking based question. It allows you to think a little bit outside the box, and it's not really using Desmos as a way of you utilizing shortcuts. It's utilizing Desmos for its original intended purpose for most of the problems, which is just to calculate and utilize that for critical thinking. So this is a sample problem that you could see something like this on the new digital SAT coming November 2024, as we predict that more exam questions will be less focused on utilizing Desmos for shortcuts and more focused on utilizing Desmos for simple math calculations to conceptually grasp the concepts of mathematics based topics such as percentages. I hope this helps you understand more problems and I hope that you do subscribe and hit that like button because we want to make sure that we're able to create more videos just like this. Thank you. Hey geeking out on STEM family, guess what? We want you to hit that subscribe button. Why? Because we'll be producing more content just like this for the AP Biology exam and the new digital SAT exam. By subscribing, you'll be getting exclusive up-to-date tips, tricks, and secrets for both exams. Also, if you're a parent, a teacher, a homeschool instructor, or a student, you might be looking for affordable and exclusive digital products to help improve multiple choice questions, free response questions, or question bank questions related to both the digital SAT or AP Biology exam. 
we have them here. Make sure to check out our link tree in our bio for curated resources that you won't find anywhere else. These unique resources are designed to help you raise your score by hitting the subscribe button. The more subscribers we get, by the way, the more videos we can make. So make sure to join our family to ensure that you get a perfect score for both exams. We can't wait to help you succeed.